today. NVIDIA's upcoming GPU is actually better than what they said. Intel's next-gen CPU gets destroyed by AMD, NVIDIA's new flagship GPU gets its first review, and AMD's next-gen Ryzen CPUs are on the way. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, NVIDIA made a bit of a mistake when they announced their new 4070 Super GPU. And surprisingly, that mistake made the GPU look worse than what it actually is. Plus, we've got some newly leaked benchmarks. First up, we have this slide that comes from NVIDIA's official marketing slides for the release. And down here, you can see that it says the 4070 Super comes with 36 megabytes of L2 cache. And that isn't all that surprising. The regular 4070 comes with 36 megabytes itself, but there's an an issue. NVIDIA has confirmed that 36 was a typo, and the 4070 Super actually comes with the full 48 megabytes of L2 cache in the 8104 GPU that the card is made from, so it is at least a little better than what we initially thought. With that said, the first benchmarks for the upcoming GPU have been leaked by video cards just before the review embargo. And as you can see, these are all 3D Mark benchmarks, and there's a ton here. This should give us a good idea of what we can expect from the upcoming GPU. Overall, the 4070 Super is between 15 and 19% faster than the regular 4070 and just 5 to 8% slower than the 4070 Ti. So it's definitely a decent boost over the regular 4070. Unfortunately, because Nvidia plans to keep the 4070 around, I wouldn't expect the price to drop below MSRP anytime soon. But first, if you want to survive the coming AI apocalypse, I'd suggest learning how AI actually works. And there's no better place than with Brilliant's new course on large language models, where you go through and see exactly what makes AI tick. But of course, today's sponsor offers way more courses than that. In fact, they were built to teach the STEM field, so they definitely have something for everyone. Whether you're interested in coding, cryptocurrency, quantum computing, and really anything in math, science, and computer science. And believe it or not, what they teach isn't the best part. It's the fact that they teach you by getting you to do it yourself, making even the most difficult concepts seem easy. So forget about boring lectures and learn the right way because Brilliant is offering my viewers a 30-day free trial when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Plus, when you sign up at brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off their premium membership for life. I don't know how long this will last, so make sure you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld. And next up for today, Intel's newly announced CPU gets destroyed by AMD's current gen, and it did worse than Intel's own last gen. This one here is really just sad, but let's get into it. Recently, Intel announced their 14th gen HX series processors for notebooks, and Notebook Check already got a chance to review the 14,900 HX in the XMG Neo 17. And starting things off, the one and only area the new part did well in was single core benchmarks. As you can see, the 14,900K overwhelmingly came out on top, but it's all downhill from here. In fact, when we look at the points per watt in the single core benchmark R23 score, we can see that the 14900HX is worse than literally every CPU tested. I mean, it's even worse than even the 12900HX. Then when we get to multi-core performance, things get even worse. The 14900HX loses to AMD's 7945HX and HX 3D, as well as the 13980HX and 13950HX. Now, it does beat the 13,900HX, but keep in mind that the 13,980HX has the same amount of cores. It just has slightly higher clocks. But get this, the clocks are actually lower than the 14,900HX, yet it still loses. Okay, so you might be thinking that it's thermal throttling because of this particular notebook, but when we look at power efficiency here, the 14,900HX loses to the 13,980HX. And of course, it gets destroyed by AMD's own 7945HX and and HX3D. Moving to actual gaming, we can see that the 14900HX does worse than even the 13900HX in most games. I mean, it's a mess. And sure, a better chassis and potentially even better power delivery could even things out a bit, but Intel's 14th gen really shouldn't even be qualified as a refresh. 
Next up, if you remember not too long ago, NVIDIA announced their new flagship GPU, the RTX 4090D. And if you've been following this channel, you knew it was coming before that announcement. Either way, the 4090D was made specifically for China to get around the recent export ban of the regular 4090, so that obviously meant the GPU had to be worse. But just how bad is it? Well, originally published on XP Review and later reported by WCCF Tech, they were able to get a hold of a Galax 4090D Metal Master and release the first review. One surprising fact is that the card can actually overclock up to the TGP limit of 425 watts. That led to an overclock of this card of 200 megahertz for a tiny boost in performance. When it comes to performance, the 4090D did surprisingly well. In rasterized gaming, it was only 5.5% slower than the regular 4090. In games with ray tracing, it was 5.8% slower. With frame generation on, it was only 5% slower, and in productivity slash AI content, we're looking at just 6% less performance. Basically, the 4090D is surprisingly close to the regular 4090, making me wonder if the US will end up banning this GPU before long as well. I'm not sure, but one thing that still sucks is that it costs the same as what the 4090 did before, so it's still less performance for the same price. And lastly for today, get ready for AMD's next-gen Ryzen CPUs. I'm not sure if AMD's planning to call them Ryzen 8000 or 9000, given the 8000 Mobile series is now based on Zen 4, but regardless, it looks like AMD is on track for their 2024 release. As you can see right here, well-known leaker Kepler on Twitter recently confirmed that Granite Ridge has already started mass production. Don't forget that Granite Ridge is AMD's Zen 5-based desktop CPUs, which means that AMD is in the final stages before release, so these very well could come as early as Q3 in time for Computex. Either way, AMD has confirmed that they are set for release this year, and given production has already started, I have no doubt that will end up being true. We'll just have to wait and see how they compare to Intel's 15th Gen Aero Lake that's also set to come this year. Time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, do you think AMD's next-gen CPUs will be called Ryzen 8000 or 9000? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!